Welcome everyone to No Filter, episode 22. And our next guest is Hollywood royalty. She's the daughter of an Oscar winning actress and has paved her own career in entertainment. She's also an entrepreneur, starting her own fashion line, also her own spirits company. And she is very spiritual and has the best energy. I always say this of this lady. And whenever I see her, she's just, her energy is contagious. I'm so happy to introduce my next guest, Kate Hudson. Hi. Hi, Kate. <laughs> Where are you in the world? I am in south of France. Oh, my. lucky. <laughs> I saw I'll be you here with you. I saw you. Uh, yes, we have. I saw you on your Instagram, all you know, done up in your hazmat, and I was like, "Where is she going?" Um, <laughs> because I saw you for a second in LA. We had a little social distance moment. We did. Um, How but are you? How's it I'm, happening? You know, I'm good. I'm really good. I'm. I'm. Um, I am just settled in and focused on all kinds of things, trying to get the kids getting, you know, school's almost about to start. Right. So we're settling all of that in. And then we've been in Colorado. So right but now I'm in a lovely place in, to be. Beautiful, yeah. clean air. Yeah. Well, we grew up there and we, you know, have a family ranch. So we, we've been there a lot. So that's what I've been doing. Just and have, do you feel like you've been working more in quarantine than... <laughs> it seems like a lot of zooms. Yes. Calls. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think I've been, I, th it's been an interesting time because the beginning, like everybody, you know, we were really concerned. Um, and you know, I, I have multiple companies and I, it's been interesting to see how they're all, how they all have been affected by the pandemic. Um, and, and, you know, Fabletics, we were so lucky because we were able to hold, you know, we've got over 600 employees and stores in, in, in 49 places across America. We were able to, to support all of our employees throughout this time. And it was really, you know, it's one of those moments you go into it and you get nervous because you have responsibility. You know, uh, yeah. And, 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 uh, but, but that was, you know, we were so grateful for that, but then on the other end of it, other things didn't work out so well and were you know, struggling. So yeah, a lot of, a lot more work than what a normal day is. But I read that, um, fitness wear is on the rise. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, fitness, I mean, athleisure, the growth in athleisure during this time, but it makes sense. I mean, it's oh, just what everybody's wearing and, you know, we're, we're, our model for a time like this, I mean, it's affordable quality athleisure wear and it's just become, you know, it, it it's been growing. It's been growing. growing. Well, and I, I, and I think that too, I mean, everything, you know, everything that I've been passionate about you too, is like, we're, we're living it right now. People are finally, I think this has really kind of unfortunately shook people to a place where they're like, okay, I got to figure out what is my version of wellness? Like, how do I get the healthiest I can be? How do I stay active? What are the best things to do? And it's nice because we've been speaking to it for so long. It's really nice that when you, when, when people start understanding actually like the importance of what it is, what, it, yeah. My yeah. body and spirit. Yeah. It's, it's a trifecta, isn't it? It's like a, it's like a happy marriage between three. <laughs> three <people. laughs> they all they need... can balance each other. Yeah. That's the goal we all want in our lives. No. Yes. I'm trying to remember, Kate. So I lived in LA in 2001. But I'm trying to remember to myself today, is that when I first met you? And I don't think it was through your mother that I met you, even though we, I love Goldie. I'm trying to remember, was it one of our mutual friends, Toby or Leo? I can't, mm -hmm. I think it was one of your Halloween parties, maybe. So it was Vivi. It was Vivi? 
So, so you came to a party at our old, old house. Was that in the Palisades? It was in the Pacific Palisades. And it was, I was 21, just. Oh no, it was my 21st birthday party. It was? <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, and you came and it was such a fun party. It, it was, was a, a dancing, <laughs> which is something I'm going to get to because I've witnessed you dance. Kate Hudson, everybody, is an incredible dancer. And I've got that question for you. I mean, first I want to get to my realm of questions. I mean, I think I met you, was it right? Was that after Almost Famous or before? It was, it was uh, before. Before. I had already shot it, but it was coming out that year. Ah, uh, got it. I mean... Did you know that when you were making this movie almost famous, it was going to be so huge? I knew it was special. You know, I knew when we were making it how special it was. And um, and I, I think we all did. You know, I think the, what you read a script, you read a script that good, you know it's going to be a good movie. You have a director mm -hmm. like Cameron Crowe that, you know, you has made some of your favorites, Jerry Maguire, Singles. I mean, all of the you know, writing Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yeah. Going into it, you're like, okay, you know, this is a special man that I'm getting the opportunity to work with right now. So you kind of know that it's, you know, it's like it's like showing up to the big leagues when mm -hmm. you're really young, knowing like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna really show up and uh, right out the bat. But no, I didn't know what I didn't know what was going to come out of it. I, you know, um, I mean, did you know that Penny would be such? She's been such a fashion influence even till this day. She's such a fashion influence. Um, you know, I think when we were, I, I was that was the hope because the I'm 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 okay, honey. I'm okay. I don't need it. Thank you. I'm gonna sip of water too. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that um so when we were creating penny lane's look betsy hyman the costume designer she was i mean it was all about iconic statements yeah so the coat i mean what she what her desire was for that coat is exactly what came to fruition you know it was sort of like the coat of the time it, you know, in her mind, this was a coat that Penny has taken all over the country, all over the world. And it's just who she is. And then underneath all of it was more just natural jeans, no bra, see-through tops, like very simple. Penny was really simple, except that coat was her. That coat gave it that swag and that twist of right. glamour in her yeah. way. That yeah. made us all want to jump back into our closets and like pull out all our stuff. I mean, I have something similar to that from Anna Sui. I mean, I keep all my Anna Sui's because I love her pillows. Her collection. I was actually looking at uh, the new, was it, I think it's Dior. And there's a full on Penny Lane coat that. that really? <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna it's literally but, um, but it, with embroidery, but it's like Dior just did a full Penny Lane moment. It was from the cruise really show that they just did. Uh huh. I've got to check that out. Yeah. So Penny Lane is twenty years old. Is that correct? Penny Lane. Well, in it, she's younger. But she, what? How you old never is really she know how old she is. Hmm. The character today is twenty. How old is Almost Famous the movie now? Oh yeah. Oh, twenty years. Yes. She's 20, 20. I mean, we are, are it September is when it came out. So, so what do you think Penny Lane would be doing today? Probably what, she, what, what one of the girls that I know is doing, she lives on a farm and she has sort of this, you know, she's very, she like, opens her house up to all her old friends and people that are sort of traveling through. And she's probably just a really cool, older, you know, I mean, if, if I'm, like if I, it depends, like if she's my age, 
you know, and it's the, it would be what, the 80s? Yeah. <laughs> She's probably still partying. <laughs> having a great time and you know doing something figuring something out maybe went to morocco probably ended up in england you know what i mean i could see her in morocco absolutely yeah but but if it was today i think if she was like in her late 60s and i think she's probably just living a very quiet life chilled life you know when you rewatch the movie Penny Lane is a very tragic character. You know, when you when you when you see it when you're young, I think when we when I first saw it, when you first, you know, I was just talking about this with my agent the other day. She just rewatched it and she goes, I didn't realize how sad Penny Lane was. And she is quite tragic. And and that was something that, you know, we did work on with the characters. So if you rewatch it, you realize like you love Penny Lane, but there's there's a deep sadness to her. And you think she uh, has a lo loneliness. Oh yeah, very lonely, you know. And 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 also like deep down a very good person. Um mm -hmm. Big so mhm. Mm and yes. really does love music, you know. Really loves the experience and the and the, and and all of it, but it's but she never really she you know, she she doesn't ever receive anything. Yeah. You know, except that, but it's, she's, she's, except the music, but she's, she is tragic, you know? And, and so I think that moment in the movie with the, what kind of beer moment, when you rewatch it, it's, you know, it's, it's kind Do of. Do you think, um, I mean, what type of roles, when you get a script, what type of roles are you looking for today? What is like something you, what catches your eye? What are you thinking? Right. Um, this is what Kate wants to do today. Honestly, the movie because industry, you are a queen crazy. of of young love, fun, romance. Little rock, Tommy. Yeah, yeah and, so and, I, and they all got fun twists and comedy, comedic romances. What do you? What do you? What do you? What do you want to do today? So the, it's a great question because the 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 reality is I have three kids. I love. I've got a lot of work, and. Um, and, and I love making movies. Like nothing will ever keep me away from making movies. The, 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 the issue with movie making is that it takes you away and it's really, really shitty hours. And when you're doing it, it's like, I better really love this story. I better love the people I'm working with. I better love this director. Or it really is like, why am I here? You know, when you first start as an actor, you're like, I'll take anything. Like, I, <laughs> I don't care what the part is, what the thing, I, I want to work, I want to work, I want to work. And then when you finally reach a sort of, you know, some semblance of success, it's like, you know, you, you you get hit around so much in the industry. You know, there's like it's like the greatest roller coaster ride you've ever been on. You've great successes, you've massive failures, and then you know you kind of try to like explain to people like this wasn't I didn't make this movie. I just I just went on to it and decided like uh -huh. you know, this could be good. I I wasn't in the editing room. I didn't. But you take all the criticism. You take all it, uh, on Which the back. Which is not fair at all. Well, I think that, no, I, I don't think it's fair. It's a fair. collaboration of everyone's efforts coming together. Yeah, I think I think what, what it is, though, is the responsibility of your choices, right? Yes. So, like, you know, you, you got to look at it and go, oh, I made this choice. Why did I make this choice? I, I knew before that maybe this wasn't the best choice. So what... What was it that led me to do this? Was it money? Was it was it working with this person? Like, you know, you you kind of you kind of have to take that responsibility, and then and then the other responsibility too is how you assert yourself, right? Like in the process, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I've been through it all. I, I've been in the on the movies where I've really inserted myself, and as a woman, when you insert yourself, oh boy you know, you're just that person, you know, it's like, what oh, do you mean by that? that? Elaborate. Well, what I mean is, is that I believe that women, the, one thing in, in Hollywood, women don't get the same opportunities. And what I mean by that is 
one failure is like an equivalent to like a three for a guy. Like a, a one female box office, not great opening, like for a woman is like the next time they, they're sort of looking at casting you for something, they're like, oh, her last movie didn't do great. Whereas for a guy, they usually give them about three to five chances. <laughs> Right. And and they'll still get paid and they'll still get the opportunity. But for some reason, women, it's a little bit different. Right. The other thing is, is that women, when you get really famous, they don't really want the really famous person in the movie. They want a new face or something more. Whereas a guy, it's totally different. Right. They want it. Matter. It doesn't yeah, matter. I've had that as a model. Yeah, it's sort of hurtful, actually, because you feel like, how do I, should I take that? Should I take that personal? No, I, I, I could. Mm. Could I try to say, okay. I think it's just a bad antiquated habit. You know what I mean? And, and I think that, um, and I think that women, you know, it's, it's, well, I, but look, I'm a silver lining type person. So for instance, like I, I, I look at it, you know, Hollywood, the way it used to be is done. It's just over. And I feel so grateful that I had the opportunity to be in that. It's almost like I was in the last class, you know? So are you saying, are you saying that, that Phil, 2019 Hollywood is done or no, I'm saying that, that the last decade of Hollywood yeah. that was the old school, you didn't mm -hmm. have these phones, you didn't have all of the stuff we're doing right now, you yeah. weren't as exposed to people. Mm -hmm. You know, once upon a time, and you know this, you did a movie, like it was very specific, the kind of press that you did. You weren't Correct. going out everywhere. You maybe did David Letterman, you maybe did a thing, so you know, you did a press junket, and, but it was very much like, you know, protected. And and the, the the idea of the movie star was was the person behind the curtain, and when you got a glimpse of them, it was in Vanity Fair or Rolling Stone magazine or Vogue or 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 the bigger shows. But we didn't have all of this connection, this interaction, and and so what it did is it created these moments where you people would get really excited to experience this person that they that they were. So do you feel those special and, times of the mystery of that person is like, it's, it's gone? Yeah. Over. I've heard we'll that a lot have, actually. We'll never have that again. And that's okay. So there's, a, there's, a, there's the, again, the silver lining of that as well, which is that we get to connect more with people. We get to understand the audience. People really get to like see- To know you more. To know you, yeah, which, which is, you know, as long as you're someone like me that's comfortable being, you know, open able to do so, then we have friends nice. who are not able to do so. No, it. right. You know, I also but, think that the, the sort of that, like, there was a time when and we're kind of jumping all over the place, but also that time there was a rebelliousness that was, um, that worked. <laughs> that worked. It was it not. Worked. Even, it was fun, and 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 you know, you you uh, you know, I mean, everything that we were doing then, nobody's doing now. <laughs> it's so true. It's like, but okay, I totally agree with you, and I understand you. As, as, I, for me, like even with social media, I was like, 2012. If you spoke to me in June and said Naomi, 2012 in June, are you gonna do t social media? Are you gonna do Twitch? I'd be like, I'm never doing that. Mm -mm. I'm not doing it Why? because <laughs> I don't know how and do I need to go to school to learn how to do it because it intimidates me and I don't think I'm ever touching that. Now, eight years later, we well, you know, we got to do it. Yeah, but you know, here's what it is. If you're an artist, you know, and your brain kind of like you know, it's one thing if I was a, a, a like a public person, really, right? The, the definition of a public person is a politician. A used public to be. Used to yeah. be. A, pu a public person isn't now this idea that, like, because you like to act or because you like to put on a show, that you're <laughs> all of a sudden a public person. You're sort of, like, thrust into this responsibility where you go, like, oh, I don't want to be a, I'm not, hey, 
You don't want to be on that hey. pedestal. Right? <laughs> and I am not the person to look up to. Now, if you're, I mean, what I mean by that is that I'm going to make mistakes. Like I didn't become an actor because I wanted to live some like, like sparkly clean life. Like I am a little out there at times, you know, these are real, you know, I, I'm not afraid to say that, but it's like, you kind of get thrust into this place of responsibility. Nobody's perfect. And I've always said the same as what you're saying right now, Kate. Like, I'm not superhuman. Um, it's nice to have um, young black women look up to me, but I am a work in progress. I do make mistakes. And because I always wanted, to, I always kept repeating that same old line every interview. Oh, it's God, like, who wants the pressure? I mean, <laughs> I. I it's like, to me, it's like, I I kind of think sometimes you're like, what well, can everyone, you know, look, I, I, it's like, I, there's a, it's, we're living in this funny time where you're sort of like, oh man, I mean, are we supposed, it's almost like we're like back into the fifties or something where, you know, things have to be very buttoned up. And But I think with you, what I feel with you, and I said this in your introduction, well, since I've all known you and I see you seen you in France, I see you in New York, I've seen you all over the world. You always remain centered with a great energy and you your energy goes to everyone around you and everyone's always enjoying around you. You're enjoying, which is most important. Right. And, you know, we've had some great friends in common and one of the people that was very important in my life, she's no longer with us and I know she knows your mother and you very well, was Primesh. And that sense of going to India for me was so important. I, I went through so many life-changing moments in India. And I feel that in some way, I've never discussed this with you, was there anything that was like that for you that were pivotal moments in your life, that things or, or advice that your mother gave you? Oh my gosh. You know, you know how they say that like, Yes. The answer is yes. I mean, I've had many, many kind of moments of, it's always when I'm traveling, We're, we are similar like that. You know, I think one of the hardest parts about this time for me, travel is like, I just love to travel to very distant, crazy, exotic places. And, um, and not being able to do that this year, I looked at Danny and I, I said, can you imagine where we have, would have been in these, in this, in this, from March to now, the experiences that we would normally have had because we love to get on a plane and we love to go. Um, and um, I think the the moments that I've had are moments that are the pivotal moments. But my first one, I was fifteen, and it's a really interesting. Um, and then I've had them throughout my life, and they're always when I'm traveling. So the fifth, when I was 15, you know, I was on this trip with a bunch of kids from 15 to 18. We were gone for a month, but it was an outdoor trip. Everything we did was very kind of like up in the mountains. And we, we, you know, we, we biked through the Rockies, like everything was uh, an adventure. And I was, I was at the top of this peak in Canada in the Canadian Rockies and I remember sitting there, sitting all by myself, and I used to always write in my journals. And I realized, like, when I was sitting there, that, that exactly that, like, it was the first alone experience I had. And I could just, it felt like I could see forever. And I was like, I, my life is going to be about exploration. Like, I was a little girl, and I knew that I needed to, what I was feeling was this sense of, like, this like I felt so tiny and so comfortable in that feeling mm -hmm. like the world is so big. There's so much to see. And that's going to be like a, a huge part of my life. And um, so so that was a defining moment. And then I think one of the other biggest ones was and it's always around a, a divorce or <laughs> breakup <laughs> or something. Um, but another defining one for me was um, I was uh, I was taking off to go from I had I hadn't left my son 
rider. I hadn't left him. I was very, like I did attachment parenting. I was very like nervous about leaving him. And it was the first time I'd left him. He was almost three and I was taking off and I was going to uh, Switzerland, I think. And, Mm -hmm. um, and I remember like the feeling of lifting off and like looking out the window and coming up over the clouds. And I had this sort of, again, another sort of spiritual moment of recognition of like the importance of your own life experience that we are alone, like, and, and that I felt okay being alone. And for me, that trip was like, my goal in life is to make sure my kids are okay alone. Like that they- What's that saying? Being alone doesn't mean you're lonely. Yeah. That's something that um, Bob always told me. And yeah. it's absolutely true. And I feel like during this whole quarantine, that is something that really rang true to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's a, you know, it's a, it's such a hard, it's such a wild time right now, isn't it? I mean, there's so much happening. Yes. And, um, and I think that, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, you, you can talk politics, you can talk health, you can talk all these things, but at the end of the day, the one thing that I've always thought was for me is the most important thing is connection. And, and. Well, you adapt, you adapt wherever you go. Right. That's what I noticed about you. You adapt. But, but, but there's a, there's a, there's something that's happening that feels disconnected and anyone who has a hard time with connection this time is exacerbating it so much. So there's so much anger and there's so much fear and there's so much loneliness and, and, you know, violence and it's coming out, it's manifesting itself in so many different heads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm saying, I I mean, I don't want to talk politics, but (laughs) I'm going to just talk a little for a second. So are you happy with our, Democrats' choice of VP. How do you feel? You're forcing <laughs> me to talk politics. You know what? It's so funny. This is the only time in my life where I really am excited about politics, meaning that I feel comfortable talking about it because clearly things need to change. You know, mm-hmm. I grew up in a really interesting home. I've got a left and a, I've got two, I've got a a libertarian and a Democrat parent. So when you grow up, I think with two very polar opposite points of view politically, and they're not totally polar opposite, but I mean, Mm -hmm. it's definitely different. You, you, you end up in the middle, right? You kind of, you kind of look at, so I've always been, you know, uh, a policy, like I've, I've never felt like I belonged to a party. Um, and frankly, I believe in two party politics and the importance of it. Cause that's what it's built on, but like healthy parties, healthy. right? Right now it's like the, what Chris Rock just posted this great thing uh, about it where it's like, everyone, everyone is fucked up right now. <laughs> like, it's all that. You know, you're looking at it, you're like, guys, can we, this is, it's just so divisive and it's so agenda specific. And you're like, I, you know, I, I just don't know, you know, that being said, I think now more than ever, I mean, clearly it's time for him to go. It's time, you know, Trump needs to go. And, and, and I, I love Kam- Kamala Harris. I've, I've, I've had the opportunity to meet her a couple of times. She is a wonderful woman. She's so smart. She's incredibly powerful. I like how she, um, I, I, I like, I feel confident in her. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I feel like I can trust that she can get jo- a job done. And so I think it, honestly, I think it's the best pick. Um, you know, and I just, I just want, you know, I, I, I long for a time where politics can be something that you can actually talk about and, and have differences of opinion and yeah. get the solution. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, 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 for me, it's like, you know, like anything, you know, I always say, like, I bring my mother to the table with politics. Like, everyone just needs a timeout. I want everyone to take a timeout. 
we need to work on conflict resolution. <laughs> <laughs> we need to talk about how we communicate to each other because this is clearly not working. Like there's so many things that, you know, the, 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 a presidential job is to manage. You're managing so much. Leadership. Right? Oh, you're leading the ship, but you're managing. And like, you know, to me, what I find as just a business person, like if someone was saying like, okay, well, here's your CEOs, like Trump's out. Like for me as a CEO, I'm not, you know, I, I kind of look, I'm like, look, he's had lots of failures. He's kind of divisive. He doesn't really bring a whole team together. This isn't the guy that I want leading my business. It's too much. You know what I mean? It creates too much turmoil. We want to grow. We want to build and we want to you want harmony in your company. Right. We want it. Right. And, and this whole, this sort of way it, it's, it's, it's over. It's, it's dying with that generation. You know, I, I the, the reality is as a mother of a millennial and a, and a Gen Z, wait, is Ryder a Gen Z? He's a Gen Z. I'm a, I'm a millennial. Uh, I'm almost, I'm like one year. Um, I'm, um, as a Gen Z parent, like it's a whole new world, this Gen Z world. They're hard to figure out. They're super fluid. They're very open. They're 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 a really special generation, and they're gonna they're go things are gonna change. Yeah. So you know, you know, I just don't know if I, our company can handle. I am, them. We have a lot of people that well other mutual friends that Lee, our lovely Lee Daniels, who absolutely loves and adores you. And I love um, also you're very loved by the black culture too, Kate, who love and adore you. <laughs> I mean, talk to me about, is there any future projects? Oh, I want to say thank you for my vodka. Oh, good. I want to ask you, can I switch, because I don't drink, can I switch for Fabletics instead of vodka? Yes. Oh but I great. You don't drink anymore. Can I send you vodka? That is so <laughs> irresponsible. I'll keep one as a souvenir because it was King Street. And yes. I know King Street is special to you. Yes. Just can pour you tell it out. about the vodka when you just started it? Because I want to just get a bit of our viewers to know about how you started the vodka. What King Street is? Oh, so for me, vodka again. Like when I'm, I have this this. You, as you know, people come to you a lot. And they want you to promote their product, and for me, I kind of looked at it like, hmm, I'm gonna bet on myself. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna bet on if there's no women founding there, I mean, there are women in, in spirits, but it's very few, right? There's, there's, it's like a, the percentage is like 7% or something really, really? low spirit. No. Oh yeah. Very few women. And if I'm going to do, if I'm going to involve myself in businesses, I want to go where there's real white space and where women are underrepresented sort of use my platform to, to be able to highlight that hopefully inspire other women to start their own spirit businesses. If you drink, um, women make up 56% of the, of, of, of who consumes vodka. Wow. And there's, you know, very few women in vodka. So I just said, well, I, I love vodka. That's what I drink most of the time. I'm a dirty martini girl. And, um, and so I'm going to do my own vodka. I'm going to make it exactly the way I like it. I'm going to, you know, and so I, I, I made it crazy smooth and alkaline filtered, non-GMO corn. Uh, we're right now researching, looking to try to get all of the female farmers uh, that grow non-GMO corn and, yeah. and buy it from them so we can support farmers. Yeah. So it's fun. And, and, and it's really just fun. I think the thing about spirit what I love, what I love about it is that you have to make one great quality product and then, and the rest is recipes. The rest is just fun, experiential, bringing people together. So it's a fun, it's a fun business to be a part of anyone who's in the spirit world. Like it, it's fun. You know, have you been to any like conventions of the spirit world or any we launched and COVID happened? I mean, you know, so, What's wild is we launched and then a couple months later, I mean, we launched in December. Right. And so. And your family were preparing right? to lock down. And then well, by yeah. March, 
So we haven't been able to do any events or any kind of any of the stuff we were looking forward to yet, but but we'll get there. Now, your Halloween parties, you're also known for. <laughs> what do you think you're going to do I'm for known for Halloween party, 2020? Man. What are we going to do, okay? Is there going to be a virtual Halloween party from Kate Hudson this a year? Vir <laughs> virtual <laughs> no, no, no. You could do a, a virtual Zoom party. party people fun. dressed up, maybe. Maybe we need like a quarantine. Everybody needs to like quarantine for two weeks. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know. No, I think we're going to have to, we're going to have to put the Halloween party. I know this. When the day comes, like Oliver and I talk about this all the time, my brother, when the party gets to happen again, it's going to be wild. I mean, I, I don't think people are just dying to have, I mean, responsible. There are people out there being irresponsible and doing yes, there are. crazy stuff, which I'm like, but, you know. Um, but I mean, I think that I feel that this year the costumes could be magnificent because people have got the time. It's <laughs> true. To make them and, and be creative in things well, that are handy to them that we think, you know, I think we could we be. We could have a costume party. We could have well, a. We could do a contest. Why don't we do a Halloween? Yeah, contest? this could be like a crazy Halloween. That would be really fun. <laughs> We should talk about that because I, I think that there could be some great ones coming out of the. We could also, you know, what we could do is everyone who's in it needs to do like a runway, like they need to yeah, set version. up their <laughs> own runway version, so that when it's time for them to like do their walk, it's almost like a, 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 a it's like what you do. <laughs> because let's face it, everybody loves to really walk the runway. Oh my god. Do. You know, by the way, I have I have so much footage of my whole family. We do runway shows all the time. <laughs> <laughs> What's your go to runway song? Oh my god, I think oh my goodness. Like what well, song say this one? Run. Prince was one of them. Because back in the day, people don't know this, maybe some do. Prince wrote a whole album for Versace for this Versace show that I did, couture show in Paris, where he's saying all our names. And so- Oh my it God. It was, I mean- How I, awesome a genius. That. So it was like, you know, that was one of my, you know, so it was the that Prince album. And I can't remember, is it called Pussy Control maybe? I'm not sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> the name. <laughs> it's, not you know, sure. Prince, Prince and George <laughs> Michael, I, I don't think you can, Go on with either of them. Aww. So now you've had a New York seller, um, top selling book, Fabuletics, King Fabuletics. Street Worker. What else is in the works, Kate? What else have we got? Anything? So, well, I know there's more so, coming. I know. So my whole goal is to like. It's like I was thinking about this. I was like a, a while ago. It's like okay, you know, if 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 Coca Cola is the is the parent company, and they own and acquire all these different companies. Maybe I could create a system where if I'm kind of considered the parent company, I can create conscious consumerism the way that and and things that are super trusted that are more affordable for people. And then I can create business and more jobs and have it be sustainably focused, environmentally focused and um, everything that inspires me in business. Right. So so for me, it's like the pillars of except for my vodka, even though I do look at that as a, as a, as a version of my wellness. A holistic vodka. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I, look, you know, people talk about gathering and, and again, connection and friends and like that, those times are, they are, we need them, you know, and then if you have some vodka we there. We realize how precious stuff. they really were. And we, what? we realize how precious those times were. I now know. that we you don't have it and we look forward I to I just want to snuggle with my friends. I want to like get, you know, like have my sleepovers and stuff. You know, we used to always have like our girlfriends, we used to just, you know, have times where we would just hang out and be in our PJs and snuggle and like be together. It's so sad that we can't do that right now. But it'll it'll come back. Anyway, so I have In Bloom, which is my wellness powders that I'm starting that launches on the 18th. We do our pre-sale. 
Um, 18th of August or September? 18th of August. And this is, yes, and I've been doing this for two years. I am crazy excited about this because this is like, to me, what supports everything. Everyone has come to me to do beauty. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I can't do beauty because to me, I mean, I, I can, but the first step to beauty is your, is your health. And, and, and yeah. so, so I uh, got together with these really awesome, this, this awesome team of people. And we formulated uh, a whole system and the system includes your dailies. It includes uh, brain cognition, like a, uh, it includes energy, sleep, uh, beauty. So we have, we have different SKUs that can speak to whatever needs you want. And then we have our proteins that are coming out. In, uh, in and this will be protein. in what form? Powder form? All Capsules. powder. I don't like taking pills. Right. I, I, don't like the, I don't like the capsule gel, the gelatine. Yeah. I just can't even swallow them. I don't, I'm just one of those, I don't even know how I can if I have banana, but it's, it's my least favorite thing to do. But I feel like we, we've all been trying so hard to keep our immune strong in this time. And mm -hmm. I, what I found myself doing is I had so many things I want to take. So now I'm just opening up the capsules and pouring them into a drink, into a so shake. That's, so, yeah, that's what I'm, so I'm finding myself constantly opening capsules. But I prefer that than just taking all that gelatine inside. I don't think it's anything. I don't think it's good for the colon or the gut. Yeah. Well, I I like fast absorption too. So my, you know, anything liquid, anything powder, it immediately goes into your bloodstream. And I, again, like you said, it doesn't make your gut have to work. Or, but yeah. there are some things like probiotic. You know, you have to. You have to. It's better if you take it. You know, anything yeah. that's probiotic, unless it's an actual cultured. You know, oh, uh, I'm excited. So but Kate, I want to try this out. You're gonna I love, love it. it. I want to. I'm sending kind of thing. you. I'm sending, kind of you I'm sending it to you. And and, and I, probiotics, you take it at night time, right? Because I well, was taking yeah, it. But in my, the day. Our, our probiotics aren't coming for. That's not what we're launching with. But we're our probiotics are coming. And then we have our proteins in September. And then I'm now right now developing like a super immunity. So basically, my whole thing about this is. How do you, like everything else, how do you create something that's easy, that is, is not daunting? You know, when we start talking about wellness, it becomes very exclusive really fast yes. for a couple of reasons. It's fucking expensive. And my goal is to democratize it, right? So it's like, yes. so, so it can be available to everyone. Everyone. Right. Yeah. And now, how do you do that without filling it with all synthetics and all the, you know, it's hard to get pure, good stuff inexpensive. So my goal is to sort of bring the price way down. I'm, we're not taking, you know, big margins. So we're bringing our price way down so it can be somewhat more affordable for, for, for people to have really sort of pot, potent um, support, you know, mm -hmm. in, in their credentials. So, um, so that's, that's, and then, and then to me, it's all about sustainability. Every sachet that we like every sachet that we're tearing off that we're, yeah. you know, is killing our environment. There's no sachet that you can get that as usable, recyclable, recyclable, yes, right? Correct. So, so my, I'm, I'm putting it in glass. It's all these beautiful bottles. Oh, with, nice. Right. And then I've just found you know, we're, we're literally everything I'm doing. It's like the sachets. It's like my goal in life is to find a truly biodegradable sachet. And I think we found it. So once we get that, we're going to have it. So it's real easy to throw in your, you, you know, carry around and travel yeah. and right. but they're beautiful. Oh, here, look at this. So this is glass. Wait, can you see glass? Yes. Let's see so the it's name. Glass. It's in bloom. In bloom. In bloom, Beautiful. and this is, it feels like it's a smooth, um, smooth to hold, like a cup. Or it is. It's like a yeah. matte white, and then it. It's not in here. Nothing's in here. This is just a yeah, thing. Yeah. But it's glass, and well, you can it, use it as a cup afterwards. Right. <laughs> exactly. You can. You can absolutely. It, that actually. Well, this is cool. perfect for you. I love it. I'm so this excited. Is perfect. And I've been. I've been doing them. I. To me, it's all about taste. You know. I tried everything and 
you know, you just want it to be tasteful, taste, taste good and eat and, and, and have real efficacy. So. And the reach to all the people, I love that. My God, Kate, I mean, I'm really interested in the entrepreneur businesswoman here because I'm like, I love all that you're doing. I mean, I got a question from the viewers that I have to ask you. Okay. So going back to Kate Hudson, the actress, which was one of your, without, I know it's hard when they say your favorite role, but that's what they're, what was one of your favorite roles and why that you loved playing as an actress? I mean, it's hard. It's always hard. But you know, know why? Because like almost famous is the easy answer because it was like career defining, you know? So I had the whole fun of that. Initial. I mean, you won a Golden Globe for that one, and you were asking up for an Oscar for that. One. Yeah, yeah, and I and it was like really defining, you know. So it's hard for that not to be my number one. But I love, I loved making Skeleton Key. Like Skeleton Key was the most. We were one of the first productions to go down to New Orleans before, right when the tax incentive changed. So uh -huh. there was only a couple movies before yes. that, that were really shot down there. I mean, there were, but like, not like they are now, like everything goes down in New Orleans. So we were one of the first ones and we had a big, it was a big production and we had the, like so much fun. I mean, it was, we worked hard, we played hard and I, it was one of those great working. It's a magical city, that's my city. It's the first city it. in the United States I ever went to. I mean, and some things, the energy about New Orleans that not, none of the other states of the United States for me has. There's something yeah, about it. It speaks to me for sure. Um, and then, uh, and then, um, How to Lose a Guy. You know, the the two movies I was really involved in production wise was How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days and Bride Wars, and yes. and those were the two movies that I I just was like day and night, day and night. And How to Lose a Guy was from the, the first time I had had that experience of working on something from the very beginning through casting. Through you know, pre post-production. Pre-production, post yeah. And, and working so closely with Linda Opes, who's just the greatest. I, I mean, she's, she's a tough cookie, uh, but she was, she produced the shit out of that movie. And, and every step of the way was hard and fun and, and the, and then the, the the success of it sort of sort of tied that all up in a great overall experience because you know well we could was, all relate <laughs> in some yeah, way yeah it was quite a feminine <laughs> you know it, it was it was really I think I think where people kind of really sort of love that movie was that you know it it's like it was kind of a of that time, like it was a very feminist movie. I mean, it, you know, when you think about it, it's like, here's this girl who's not interested in a relationship, who's like, I'm gonna go destroy this guy. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do everything that a guy thinks girls do, this, you know? And so it was, a, it was a wonderful like setup for two very sort of independent people. And for, a, for girls, I think it was really, I don't know. It was empowering, you know. Beginning of a uh, power. Have yeah. you spoken to? I mean, the guy Matthew McConaughey. Have you spoken to him? Have you kept in touch? Yeah, we talk. I mean, we don't. We don't really. We don't really like text or anything. But like, we'll 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 check in. You know, um, we have our nice little. Now that he's, um, now that Fun. he's on, on uh, Instagram. Yeah, like we'll have oh, our answer. Yeah, wow. he's on Instagram now, but we'll have our night. We'll have a little banter here and there. Um, but the, the quarantine has new Instagrammers that I never thought would come on Instagram. Johnny Depp. I oh yeah, I I saw that. I saw the Johnny Depp on Instagram. Yeah, I hasn't he only did like one post though. I I when I when I went on to oh, it, it was one post. I haven't checked it since, but um, I mean. You, besides your acting, your entrepreneurial businesswoman, but I also know because I've gotten to be with you and your mother at one of your events in London for what you do for children mm -hmm. who are deaf. Um, 
can you just explain to us, because I know you, Mother, and you've been doing this for many, many years. And I also got to be at the one in LA. The last one was at Ron's house. Well, so, so it's m Mind Up. Mind, mind Up is, uh, it's a curriculum for kids that my mother created for, um, for social and emotional learning. So, so what it is, is it's a, it's a way to integrate into your actual, into children's, um, it, into their curriculum. So it doesn't take away from anything. It's, it's, it's a way of learning that mm -hmm. is supporting your emotional and social uh, management. So what it does is it teaches kids about their brain. It al allows for kids to understand how they can regulate their own emotions and stresses and um, fears. Yeah. I have found through, I mean, my mom works on this tireless. I'm on the board. You know, I show up when I uh, need to show up and, and, and I make sure that, you know, we're all supporting my mom. My mom really is at the center of this and, and it's incredible what this is what this does for kids. Yeah. We see it as preventative, right? So there's a lot of things that are band-aids and we need them in, in, in charity and, 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 but the idea is like, we're trying to change the future, the, the future mental health of, of, of the next generation. And mm -hmm. we know now through all the research that there's a series of things that you can do with your brain to teach your brain like a muscle, how to, how to exercise that muscle. So right. how do we make sure that every kid has this skill when they're not getting it at home? Uh, because, and it's with no fault to the parent, but like, it's just something that a lot of people aren't really aware of. And how do we strengthen the emotional, social part of our brain? Because that is what's going to get us through right. the hard shit. <laughs> it's like, you know, yeah. And how do we cope? You know, you, you look at people who have difficult coping mechanisms and how do we manage a stressful situation? Um, and, and these are things that the, the younger that we teach, the better, you know, their, their, fu their future is. And we're, we've got children, depression is up, uh, so, so highly medicated. We're just continuously medicating so many kids. And before we even really know how their brain develops. So- yeah. You know, we're, we just, you know, my, so my mom started this and it's just, she reaches over, I, I guess at this point, over six and a half million kids. It's really amazing. Um, and, and so there's that, there's that part of it. And then there's, for me, um, it's, it's eating, it's food, it's hunger. So mm -hmm. I work really closely with the world food program. I'm a global ambassador for them. And, um, do you know the world food program? Yes. And, and, and we, um, right now, I mean, we're, we're right now in doing a lot in Lebanon and Beirut, um, right. after yeah. the explosion, but, but the world food program right now has a huge, huge couple of years ahead because of COVID. I'm, I'm I mean, sure. We're going to see famine Absolutely. in biblical proportions and it's terrifying. We you haven't know, even begun to see really they and they probably won't really know until probably towards the end of 2000 uh, 2020 of what yeah. they have to deal with yeah and the reason why food hunger became something that i was really 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 uh focused on is because you can't do anything you can't you have no there you there's no opportunity if you can't eat yes. there's no you know what what that one the simplest the simplest thing of just food just just being fed changes the trajectory of one person's life in every way and um and so the it's also something that i believe can be you know that we can reach zero hunger as as michael kors michael kors likes yeah. to do i mean you know, they say they want to eradicate hunger by 2030. that's the hope that's but hope. you know, it's going to be hope. It has to be. It has to. It has to be. Yeah. No and so child should not hungry. Oh, and I mean, everywhere, everywhere in the world, America, 
Uh, I mean, there's just not one place right now that is that is not uh, suffering. It's where not suffering in some way, right. and and with you know more to come, and that's that's a tough one. So so yeah, so I'm very involved with them, and and I um, to me they're just the sort of number one organization. They reach 81 million people. Um, we're going to have to reach a quarter of a of a billion by and probably yeah. So whatever I can do to get the ball rolling for them and get as many funds as possible so that they can do what they do. These people are so amazing, Naomi. They go into the most dangerous places to just- I know, most dangerous. I met a lovely lady from the World Food Program, um, either at, I think in Davos, a few years ago. Yeah. And I mean, they work tirelessly, tirelessly. Yeah. I would They're love incredible. to be able to do something with Fashion for Relief and you and them, because that really is going to be a huge focus. Yeah, great. Just call me. Yeah, yeah. Call me. I, should. I would like to, because I think that's, you know, people don't realize the effect of how things are really bad things are going to get in that aspect. Yeah, people, you know, you talk about opportunity, you talk about, you know, there. there's just, when, when it's like, even... Even, you know, again, we're talking about social and emotional learning kids, you know, you've got refugee camps that are made up of 80% women and children. I, when I we, went to Zatra in, um, outside of Jordan and that's exactly what it is. The goal that got all the men were gone. Yeah, I mean, they're either fighting or they're, they've been, you know, killed. And, and, and when you get, you know, more involved in this, you realize like, you know, no child can function in any way with their education, with, with their ability to cope with depression, with all of these things, if they're, if they have no nutrition, mm -hmm. nutrition is the, is, is the, is the first entry point to survival. And so okay. that's why I, that's why to me, it's, I'm, I'm just, you know, crazy passionate about it. But, so. Wow. Kate Hudson. Naomi Campbell. Thank you. I can't. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I could sit here and talk to you all night because everything know, you love say you. is so honest and true and authentic always. And your contagious, positive energy is stretched out here to this side of the, across the Atlantic. I feel it. And I'm oh. grateful that you could do this today. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. And good I luck on what's it? What's the name of the company? New Bloom? In, in Bloom? in bloom good luck in bloom. On in bloom and that's my type of thing so i'll switch out the vodka for that <laughs> i'm sending it to you but you're in the south Thank of france you. hopefully it'll i'll hopefully be it'll... back home soon okay i'll be back uh, home soon love. i love you lots and i can't thank you enough okay say hi to mom for me please i will okay darling. Bye. god bless bye-bye